Hi, my name is Sherry Pittman. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Revit user interface so that you can get familiar with the terminology of the different areas as well as where to locate some of the tools. In this example, I will be using Revit 2014. In this video, I am working with Revit that comes with the building design suite. So this has all disciplines within it. Yours may look somewhat different, but the terminology that I'm using should be consistent between all the programs. So I'm going to go over the different terms applied to different areas within Revit in the user interface, and this will strictly be an overview. I'll come back in you know, additional videos and go over things that are more specific. Your application menu, which is in the upper left-hand corner, will have various tools that you have access to. The one key thing that I do want to point out in here is your access to your options. And in here is where you're going to set you know, specific things for how you want to use Revit and where you want to look for things. The next area that we'll talk about is the Quick Access Toolbar, which is located at the top. And mine is going to look a little bit crunched just because I have to reduce my screen size for the recording. But anytime you see these arrows, that just means there's more off to the side. The Quick Access Toolbar can be customized, and it can be moved to the bottom of the ribbon if you choose to do so. Your ribbon itself is broken into three different areas. At the top of the ribbon, so this area being the ribbon, you have tabs. Within each tab, you have panels. And within each panel, you have tools. Now, some tools are going to have a down arrow, which indicates that there are additional tools underneath of that. Whatever symbol you happen to see right here means it's the default tool. So if I were to just click on here, it would automatically start the architectural wall tool. Now, some tools are going to activate what's called the options bar. So if I were to draw a wall, for example, your options bar is going to be above your view area, but below the ribbon. So it will always be located right here. And this has information that will help you predetermine or preset information associated to that particular tool. You also have what's considered your info center, which is all of this area up here. So your sign into 360, your search bar, you know, your communication center, and so forth. Your type selector, which is located on your properties palette. And that's going to bring up information specific to either the view or something you have selected. So right now, the information that I see is relative to this particular view. If I select something in the view, then you'll see information about that particular item. And this is your type selector. So from the type selector, you can go in and pick other types of the same category. So for example, I can change my 8-inch wall to a 12-inch wall. But I could not, however, change my wall into a floor. It has to be the same category. Your project browser, which is located in this case over on the left, both of these are movable. So your properties palette and your project browser can be repositioned. Your project browser is how you're going to navigate throughout your project. So the one that's dark right now indicates that this is the view that I'm in. If I double click on another view, it'll take me to that view, and you'll notice this one's dark now. Our drawing area is the area where we're going to place our modeled and detailed items. We also have what's called the view control bar, which is located down here at the bottom. And this holds information or tools that are relative to this particular view. So each view has its own scale, detail level, graphics, and so forth. And a lot of that can be set from here. It can additionally be set from your properties palette. Now, it doesn't matter which place I change it. If I change it here, it automatically is updated down here. And then the last place that I want to talk about is your status bar. So when you're working on tools, your status bar is going to give you some basic information on how to do something. So if I start a wall tool, you can see that it's telling me to pick a start point for the wall. So it's not as comprehensive as the command line in AutoCAD, but it does give you some basic direction. I 
I want to talk a little bit more in depth about the ribbon itself. So as I indicated in the overview, there are three primary areas, your tabs, your panels, and the tools themselves. So as I mentioned before, any tool that has a down arrow indicates that it's got additional tools underneath of it. The same thing is going to be true of the panels. So if I see a down arrow, you can see that I can get to additional tools in here. If I go to a different tab, you'll notice that some of these have down arrows, so like a 45 down arrow. And this will take me to settings for that particular panel type. Now, you can you know, undock a panel. So if you need to keep it you know, up here where you're working, you can do that. And then you can return it to the ribbon. So it'll go back where it was if you just click on there. As I mentioned before, I have to reduce the size of my screen when I'm doing the recording. So you'll notice that I also have additional tools off to the right here. So I can get to those simply by clicking on either one of those you know, tools that really represent one of the tabs on the panel. There's a couple other things I wanted to talk about as far as in relation to how things are set up. So, you know, the little dialog boxes that we see here are properties palette and so forth. These are all on the view tab under user interface. So, and some of this I know has gone off the side of my recording, but anything that's got a check mark in it means it's visible. If it doesn't have a check mark, then it isn't. Now for the properties palette itself, you can just right click and, you know, bring it back or take it away. But for the project browser, it doesn't work the same. So if you close it, it's going to be hard to navigate throughout your project. So to open it back up, again, go to the View tab, User Interface, and then just put a check mark back in Project Browser. And it'll reposition itself where it was last. You'll notice that the ribbon automatically changes to what's called a context tab when you select something. So when I select something, and because of my screen size, you can't see it really, but I've by default been moved to the modify tab that is relative to walls. So when it does this, you'll see at the end of your screen a green tab, and that will be your modify tab. And again, it's once you select on something, this will automatically come up. By now you've probably noticed that when I'm hovering over tools inside of Revit that it will bring up a brief description and then the longer I hold over it without selecting it, it'll bring up more information about that tool. In brackets beside it, I'll see what the shortcut key is. And if it's a two digit shortcut key, you'll just type in those two letters. So in this case, WA, you don't have to hit enter and it will automatically start the tool. If it is a single letter, you know, shortcut key, then you'll have to type in that one letter and hit enter for it to be activated. Some of these tool tips also have videos associated to it. So if I look at the align tool, for example, if I wait long enough, it'll bring up the tech tip video that goes with it. And you can control, you know, the level that you want these tips to show up in your options. The Quick Access Toolbar is by default located at the top of your ribbon. As I mentioned in the overview, it can be moved to the bottom of the ribbon. So when you select the farthest down arrow and click Show below the ribbon, it will reposition it here. If you want to move it back to the top, same process, Show above the ribbon. You can also add other tools from any of the panels by simply right-clicking on one and adding to the Quick Access Toolbar. You'll notice that this one is grayed out, and that's because it's already on my toolbar. So if that happens, that's what that means. So I can add doors. If I want to rearrange things or add separators, you can do that by customizing the Quick Access Toolbar. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So you can just kind of you know, move items up or down. You can also add separators. So if I wanted to add a separator, 
And then let's say I wanted doors and walls together, then I can just move my door down into that area. And one other item that I want to talk about, it's not really related to the ribbon, um, but we do have the option to reposition the, the options bar. So you can either dock it at the bottom or leave it docked at the top. Another important area of the screen to be aware of is the options bar. And it doesn't show up for everything, but for some tools, it will bring up the options bar area with information that will allow you to preset how you're going to work with that particular element. So you'll notice that I can change the wall to have a height or a depth, whether it's connected or unconnected. And in Revit, virtually all walls should be connected to another level, whether it's in relation to its own level with an offset or the level above or below. Your location line is going to indicate where you're drawing the wall from. So if you're drawing an exterior you know, shell, you'd want to set it to where you're going to dimension to. So whether that's finish face exterior or core face exterior. Change just means it's going to continue from point to point to point. And offset is if you want to offset from where you're drawing. Next, we'll talk about the project browser and the properties dialog box. You'll notice that these can both be relocated on your screen and docked, you know, top or side, depending on where you want to see them. If you close them, to bring them back, the Properties dialog you can bring back by right-clicking and then just select Properties and it will reposition itself where it was initially. For the Project Browser, however, you're going to have to go to the View tab and to User Interface and then just select Project Browser and it will show up where it was before. So the Properties dialog box is going to give you information about the view or if I have something in the view, it'll give me information about that particular element. So I'll go ahead and place a wall. And when you select the wall, you'll see information that is specific to that wall. So if I wanted to change the wall type, I could do that from here. If I wanted to change its base or top constraints or offsets or any of that information, that would be in this view. Now Revit works by once you select one item, it automatically will deselect the last one when you select the next one. So I can't select multiple things by just picking unless I hold down my control key. If you hold down your control key, you can select multiple items and it will bring up common information between those items. So since a view and a wall don't have anything in common, that's why the properties palette was blank. Now your project browser is how you're going to navigate throughout your project. So level one, level two, site plan, which is associated to level one, just with different view settings, your elevations and so forth. So as you add additional views, so elevations, sections, details, you know, 3D plans, anything like that is going to automatically be added to your project browser. One more thing that I forgot to mention about selecting multiple items. So you can do a crossing window and it would grab anything that it crosses. Same thing, you know, similar to AutoCAD, you can do windows or crossing windows. And again, my property palette is only going to show information that's common to whatever I've got selected. But let's say that I wanted to deselect the wall without having to repick these items. You can do that by holding down your shift key and selecting the item that you want to remove from your selection set. Your view control bar is located at the bottom of your view screen. And in Revit, every view has its own scale, its own detail level, its own visual style, 
all of this information down here is specific to this particular view. So if you want to change the scale of the view, you can do it from here. You can also do it from your properties dialog box. So just make sure you're not in a command or you don't have something selected. And then you can change, you know, those same properties from the properties palette as well. But this is your view control bar. There are a couple more things that I want to make you aware of. One thing that you should be aware of is how many windows you have open, because the more windows you have open and the more intense the graphics within those windows, it can slow down you know, the performance that you're going to see inside of Revit. So if I want to close all of the extra windows that are open in you know, whatever project, if I have, in this case, I just have one project open. If I had multiple projects open, it would collapse this list down to the last active view for each project. And you can do that by just clicking on this button. And that's Close Hidden Windows. Another area that I think is important that you guys are familiar with is your Help area. So this will take you to Help. If you want to find out information about the version of Revit that you have, you can go all the way down to the bottom here to About. And it'll bring up information on what your build is and what update is installed. If you go into product license information, that will also give you your serial number and your product key. There's one last area I wanted to talk about, which I didn't really cover in the overview. And it's off to the side of the status bar. You have your work sets dialog box and your design options. Again, those are controlled through your view tab and user interface. So if you don't want to see those, you can just turn them off. So just take your check marks out and they won't show up at the bottom.